Hey, what's up everyone? It's Doug here with Retro Geek Gaming once again bringing you another video discussion. Feel free to put your thoughts on this topic in the subject, uh, sorry, in the comments down below. And of course you probably already know what we're going to talk about today because of the simple fact that, well, it's in the title. But Nintendo has recently revealed a new Nintendo 2DS XL and this is a big shaking my head kind of moment for me because I kind of see the good and the bad for it but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to you know, kind of just talk about it, be the usual devil's advocate that I am and go over the good and the bad and try to sort of meet somewhere in the middle on this but I'm going to just basically just be forth with this. Now I'm just going to, I'm just going to basically throw this out there, be very forthcoming with you guys and basically just be honest, I don't see the point. To this. Okay, I mean we just got, well we didn't just get, but basically we have the new Nintendo 3DS XL and to me that's enough. I mean you have three iterations, you know, you have the 3DS and to an extent the 3DS XL because that's just a larger version, then you have the 2DS and you have the new Nintendo 3DS. That's three versions of the system. You know, each with it, like, like, it's sort of like how the Game Boy did. You had, I mean the Game Boy Advance, I guess you could say. You had the Game Boy Advance, then you had the the uh, the improved upon um, SP, and then you had the um, No Reason to Exist Micro, and so you had three iterations of the Game Boy Advance family based upon whatever your needs were. And that's how I feel like it is with the 3DS. You had three versions of the system to fit your needs. So now we're throwing in the new Nintendo 2DS XL, which I guess is really just kind of a sidestep to the 3DS, but to me it doesn't really... I mean, I guess I get it to an extent. I mean, it's half the price of the Switch, and, you know, it's the kind of thing that maybe, because, you know, the Switch is so popular now, it's got 2.7 million something sales. You know, there might be people who have it that maybe don't even know about the 3DS, that maybe when they watch it direct, they're like, what's a 3DS scratching their head? And they can reveal this thing at E3, they can show off Switch games, they can show... But the reason why I question this is because there really wasn't much of a purpose to the new Nintendo 3DS XL. So what do I mean by that? What games used the new hardware? I mean, sure. A lot of the games like Resident Evil Revelations, you can go back through and play them again, like you know, controllers like like a regular controller, without having to have a Circle Pad Pro. But there weren't a lot of games like Xenoblade Chronicles. That's pretty much the only one that I can think of that's a physical release that actually needed the n new hardware. And with the exception of some virtual uh, of uh, some virtual console games and stuff like that. Um, and stuff like Binding of Isaac, which I guess couldn't have worked on the original 3DS. Um, there's not a lot of games that really need that new hardware. I mean, you can play Smash Brothers, you can play uh, Mario Kart 7, you can play all the big physical releases that come out for the 3DS on any piece of hardware. So it's not like they're coming out with the new Nintendo 2DS and they've improved the resolution, they've improved the graphics, and they said, hey, here's specific 2DS games. And again, you know, I know that this is probably just me, but it really felt like the new Nintendo 3DS was the goodbye to the system. You know, think about it along the terms of the DS. We had the Nintendo DS that came out, um, then we had the better looking and improved Nintendo DS Lite. And then we ended up with the DSi. And the DSi was sort of that bridge gap. You know, it, it was going to, it basically ended up becoming what the 3DS was going to become. It had a camera on the inside and on the outside. It had a lot of the same uh, features and hardware uh, capabilities. As far as you know, being able to do music and video and all that stuff on it, that the 3DS could do. Just the 3DS put a 3D screen on it with a circle pad instead of being fully D-pad. But otherwise, it was the exact same thing. And then when we moved into new hardware, and that's where I was sort of thinking of with this. It's just like, look, you have the 3DS, then you have the slightly improved, uh, you know, 
capabilities of like the XL, um, more rounded and stuff like that. Then you had the 2DS, then you had the new Nintendo 3DS XL, which threw in the second stick that everybody asked for, the ZLZL buttons, and it was sort of like, you know, the, the little goodbye wave into a new hardware, which they ended up getting the Switch. But now we have this, and I understand that Nintendo's focus is again, that the Switch is the hardware, it's the, it's the home hardware, that's the reason why it's $300, that's the reason why, you know, it has beefier uh, tech in it, and the 3DS is there as the portable. But that's where I draw the line in the sand a little bit, because I'm just like, but the point of the Switch was that it was going to be both. I mean, you combined your home and portable markets into one division in order to release games quicker. And the whole point of the Switch was that it's a portable and a home console. It's both. So that way you can release more games for it and not have a situation like the Wii where you have basically one game coming out a year or probably not even that sometimes and have these long droughts. You know? Now, I appreciate what the Switch is doing. Again, it's coming out with games little by little versus all of it at, in, in the beginning and then it trickling down into nothing. But the point of the Switch is that it's the portable and it's the home console. So to me, there's no point to the new Nintendo 3DS XL. Because that's where I'm coming from. Again, I, maybe I'm the only one who's thinking about that. Plus for me, and again, I don't know all the technology that goes into the 3D screen, but it just seems to me like it's just easier to just take the new Nintendo 3DS XL and drop it down in price. And if you're worried about, oh, well, you know, what about the people that don't like 3D? Don't play it in 3D. I mean, I know that I'm probably one of the three people on this planet that actually like playing this, the, uh, the 3DS with the 3D on. To me, the games look better. I mean, that's just me. But for the people that don't like it, switch. Hit this little switch that cuts it off. Or just go into the parental controls and completely disable it. There's no need to have a $150 machine comes out and does basically what you can already do on the new Nintendo 3DS XL and just cut the 3D off. So again, I don't know what goes into that technology to make it so pricey. Maybe they can't cut it down in price because of that. I don't know. You know, and maybe they removed the face tracking technology because it's 2D. Maybe that's the reason why they're able to make it cheap like that. And you know, for $150, that's a good alternative. I can see it doing well for maybe people who still want to play their 3D, their 3DS games and they like the look of this and you know they just don't want the 3D but they want the clamshell of it and all that stuff which is one of the big grabs about the 2DS. But for me we've moved on and you know this just this just makes me a little bit concerned because I was really thinking that this year was going to be the last year for the 3DS. I mean we've got the Switch now like I said it's sort of like the portable and the console. And we've got probably now well over 3 million Switches sold. Um, and it's doing well momentum-wise. So if Nintendo kept coming out with those games, and keeps coming out with those games, it's going to continue to sell well. So maybe we'll get another year out of the 3DS, but it just seems like it's getting to the point now to where even I have to say that enough is enough. I mean, I love my 3DS. I love the fact that they're continuing to support it. And maybe they just have a few of these games left that they need to get out and finish. But if you just think about it, you're just talking about like, okay, you have another iteration of a system that we pretty much were all thinking was done because the Switch was coming out. And now you've developed new hardware, which just makes it so you're going to continue continue to support it even longer because why come out for new hardware if you're only going to support it for I mean it's coming out like July so why would you support it for another six months and then say that's it why would you come out with new hardware if you're only going to support the thing for like another six months you know so that's all I'm getting at I mean only time will tell maybe this is just a cheap alternative and that's all they're looking at it as and you know they just think you know we got this looking really well and we just want to come out for new iteration um, just to show people that look, we're still, you know, we're making our stuff look better. But to me, it doesn't look that great. I mean, if I'm just honest with you, I like the look of my new Nintendo 3DS better. 
I mean, it's the perfect size. I, I love the way the buttons are done. Uh, and this one, I just don't like the blue. I mean, I think that's the only thing that throws me off is the blue. If they had an option of different colors, which maybe they'll show off at E3, then I might be more on board with it. Or if they can do maybe like you could do with the... Um, that would actually be a really good idea, actually. Is if they did like they could do with the Xbox One controllers and allow you to sort of customize it to where you can get the buttons that you want. That would be a really good option, too. But I'm not going to go into too much more of this. I mean, I, I kind of see the good in it. They continue to support the 3DS, which that's great. But at the same time, you have the Switch now. It's supposed to be a portable. So I can kind of see the good in it. You know, it's like for the people that love the 3DS, they have another option. Maybe you have people that they want both. And so they're just like, well, you know, I don't know if I really like the 3D. I don't really know if I like it. They have that option. And, you know, it might be a good... And it would be a better idea if the 3DS somehow worked with the Switch. I don't think that's going to happen. But just like they did with, like, the 3DS and the Wii U kind of having some connectivity with, like, Smash Brothers, if that was the case going forward where they could have that connectivity as maybe another controller option, then certainly I can see you continuing to support the 3DS, and I think that that's a great idea. But if you're not going to do that, and all you're going to do is just come out with more games, and then games that really just would even work on an original, like, $80 original 3DS, then I don't see the point to this. And if you come out with games that are more like Xenoblade Chronicles 3D that actually need that hardware, that extra boost, that extra kick, then that's fine. Do that. I don't know. It's that whole gray line that the Xbox Scorpio has, but I'm not going to go into that here. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. As always, give this video a big thumbs up. If you didn't like it, that means that you've watched it all the way to the end and you like this content and you want to see me do more videos like this and really just do more videos, period. Also, feel free to subscribe because I do plan to start getting around to doing more videos. There just hasn't really been a lot of stuff in the news lately that I really felt like talking about. And uh, appreciate you guys watching as always. Have yourself a good one. And I'll see you next time.